really glad I did it, but I'm also just really glad that it's finished. <laughs> we couldn't have done it without my husband because he, he uh, made a scaffold that I could stand on because there's a stairwell here and I had to be suspended over the stairwell for over a month. Uh, this whole project was overwhelming and difficult. Uh, I'm a watercolorist, you know, by profession for years, and um, I don't know w what kind of moxie I had to say that I could do an oil painting, but you know, you can't do watercolor on a wall, obviously. And I had done a small oil painting at um, Widewaters this summer, and I just knew that oil was the medium that it should be done in, and I just hoped that I could do a good job. Uh, Jeff Watkins is a local artist and a friend of mine, and he's a mural painter, and he encouraged me and said he would help me, you know, buy the right mediums and buy the, you know, tell me what oil paints to order. So he was uh, a big motivator in me deciding to go ahead and try this. Uh, but it was, it was overwhelming, the, just the size of it and um, physically to be up on the mural all day or up on the platform all day. Um, uh, I was supposed to do it the month of February and I think we started on January 28th setting up the scaffolding and I worked a little over a month. I think I finished on March 3rd. So, uh, and then at the end, the last two weeks, I was painting almost every day. I would come on Saturday and Sunday just because uh, we needed, they had uh, already planned the unveiling party where the donors were going to come and see the mural and we wanted to have the flowers dry enough that I could give them a light spray of varnish and be able to put the plaques up before the party. So I really felt pressured to get things done and I, you know, as I would be painting, I'd have a problem with something not looking in the right proportion and I just feel that panicky feeling and it's just like, keep going, keep going, just fix it, do the best. Like one of the girl's hands I wasn't happy with so I just put a flower in front of it. You know, I would, I would fuss with something for a certain amount of time and just say that's the best I can do and I learned um, through having the pictures on Facebook, I was encouraged by everybody's uh, enthusiasm and I'm, you know, right up close painting it so closely and then when I would see the big picture at night, you know, I'd post at night and I would see the big picture and I would realize that they weren't going to focus on the little minutia that I was focusing with on, that they would see the mural as a whole. So that really helped me just, you know, do it the best I could and keep, and keep going. It has very, very much surprised me that working in watercolor all these years made me a better oil painter because color is color. I still mixed, um, you know, the same colors to get green and to get my blacks. I, like I didn't buy black, I still mixed my blacks. So in that way, that came easily to me, but it's opposite if, if you're a painter watercolor you save the white paper and paint around it which some people did accuse me of doing here because it was just easier to get a fresh white if I hadn't put something under it but um, you know oil you you'd normally work dark to light so you put your darks on then you can layer stuff um, the thing that I really liked about the oil painting is that well with watercolor you do a drawing and then you kind of almost like a paint by number idea where you're painting in where where you want things but with this I could draw with the brush I really liked that I could just didn't even have to have something drawn I could just pull up a reference of a sunflower and I could just you know draw it with my brush and lay it in and I really liked that process and I'm enjoying that so as far as getting the models um, I just had in my mind that I wanted to have a woman that was pregnant and that morning when I went to church uh, the first woman in the mural was uh, the lector at our mass so and she's a family friend and I know her uh, she's a young doctor actually and she's had her baby now so they're all doing good uh, so I asked her and she was you know more than willing and then the little boy with her is her nephew who also goes to our church uh, the, um, the woman on the end here, Felicia, and her daughters are tenants of ours. We have apartments here in Lockport, and 
She's a lovely young woman, and she also had had a story of um, having a, an abusive relationship, and she really wanted to uh, participate in this, and her girls are beautiful, so that was nice. Um, then, like I had said before, the, the, the day before I was supposed to start, um, the CEO said, oh, we'd like to have an older woman in the mural, so uh, I was just trying to think, well, who can I ask? And it was a day we had a big snowstorm in the end of February. And uh, I looked through my Facebook friends, and Diane popped up, you know, in there. And I knew she was from Gasport. I'd never been to her home or anything. And I just sent her a Facebook message, and I said, if you see this today, I'm looking for a model, if you could call me. A couple hours later, she called, and she says, what do you want, like one of my grandchildren? I said, no, I, I want you. And she goes, oh my gosh. So I went right up to her house, uh, like an hour later, and uh, photographed her and then she told me that she had had uh, experience with um, when she when she was a young mother and was uh, divorced how much the YWCA helped her uh, with babysitting and some money to get she didn't have any gas money or something it, it, you know I, I don't know all the particulars of the story but the babysitting uh, helped her to go to college and she got her degree and she's an art teacher in the Lockport school system. She's an art teacher, so that's a great story. Um, it was funny how there was a connection to the YW and we were really happy to have them in the murals. So it, it had, a, had a nice backstory. So on the question of would I paint another mural, sure, but I don't know that I'd want to paint one this large. If I did paint one this large, I would allow more time so that I could paint less hours a day and have more time for my body to recover. But I did enjoy it. So yeah, I would do it. Um, I really like to be creative with fundraising when, when you are, certainly we want to recognize our donors. And yet, it's funny, you know, they will come in, they will see their name, and then for the first 10 minutes, and then that, it's just, they are kind of static for a while. And so I really like to do something that's more interesting, that's going to capture people's attention for a longer span of time. And I love working with artists because they are so creative and they're interesting and they really, um, the, the reason that we, we thought about working with Kathleen is that we really wanted something that really embodied our mission statement, which is to empower women and to eliminate racism. So we wanted something that's uplifting, that's optimistic, that really made people uh, want to be a part of the YWCA, which is very easy if you know us, but a lot of people don't know us. And so um, there are a lot of people who come through this space, and so certainly we want to recognize and honor our donors, but we also want to um, have a, a beautiful um, entrance for anybody who, who enters the space. That can be the kids who come in, uh, the parents who sign up for the summer programs, our culinary students, our staff, our donors, visitors, anybody. So this is something that's inspiring, it's uplifting, it um, provides hope and promise and optimism, and that's what we're all about. So our, our campaign goal was over a two-year period of the, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the YWCA, and that's why we had our campaign. So it was covered the um, two, 2015 and 2016 years and so we really focused on trying to build and, and succeeding in building an endowment fund which doesn't mean that we're finished but it's a grand grand start and what this does is this provides perpetual funding for all of time so it's sustainable dependable funding and that's something that especially nonprofits well anybody actually would want because then you're not so uh, dependent on on whatever any particular year holds, but you know you have some funding that you can depend on. So we did that through plan gifts. We also did it through naming of spaces across the footprint of the YWCA, and then that inclu includes Carolyn's house. It includes um, several spaces here at 32 Cottage Street. It includes some spaces in the shel a local shelter. So um, there will be a presence, and in each of those um, spaces. We also have plaques that 
the donors recognized somebody who inspired them and so they wrote stories about them, they gave their pictures, and those, those will hang in the spaces that have been named for them. So what you see on, on the mural are people who have contributed towards that endowment and people who have made it really a significant gift. I mean, all gifts are important to us, don't get me wrong, but, but we have, have really uh, significantly impacted um, what we're able to do. So that's who's on the donor wall. We are continuing with um, the plan giving program, which is going to be crucial for us. People make end of life gifts, they make commitments now. We honor them and then as they pass, we like to keep our friends as long as we can, but that's all where we all end up, right? So when they do pass, their gifts will come into endowment for the YWCA also, which is wonderful. Um, there are any number of areas that people might be interested in. Some people are very involved with the, with the student programming in this after school and, and in summertime. Um, we have the shelters, domestic violence is, is really a very important part of our work. And of course, Carolyn's house has 19 apartments. And, um, and so we host, we, we po um, uh, worked with over 500 women and children over the, top, the duration of Carolyn's House, which is huge. And we're now we're looking to start this project at 49 Tremont, which is going to be housing senior uh, domestic violence um, survivors. And, and there'll be a, a social enterprise um, uh, uh, operation in that location as well. So there, there are two endowments that were started. One was the YWC in general, which is great because that gives the CEO, whoever it is at the time, unrestricted, she can apply it wherever she wants to. I'm gonna say she because, you know, the institution. But also, some people donate specifically to Carolyn's house, and so we have an endowment for Carolyn's house. So, so there are those two endowments. And it's, it's really wonderful because we, you know, we have like $150,000 in plan gifts so far, 155 actually and over $100,000 in the namings. That sounds like a lot, but when you look at payouts that are really probably in the range of three to four percent, it's, you know, it's a, a great start, but we have, to, we have to do a lot of building. So, and so some people um, will give towards endowments, but many people give annually in the operational funding, and that's money that we use on an every year, I mean, on that year basis. So we need to keep that coming in as well.